Hey, what's up guys? It's David here and welcome back to my channel SOS Collector. So, lately I've been collecting statues, but I still love my 1-6 figures. Cause I feel that my eyes can still see a lot of details on a 1-6 figure. And there she is, Suicide Squad Harley Quinn from Hot Toys. And she's been all alone by herself for so long. To be honest, I only loved the first Suicide Squad movie because there was Harley in it. Then I saw her pudding, the Joker, he was on sale at a local seller, and it cost around 75 bucks, brand new, sealed in the box, and he's been on sale for months, and still nobody wanted him. I know that this Joker wasn't really popular and all, but I think this is by far the cheapest Hot Toys figure. It's cheaper than the unlicensed or even smaller scale figures. I wonder, is it really one of Hot Toys' worst figure? So let me know what you guys think of this piece. Is it really so bad that the going price is this low? For me, it's a no-brainer. I don't think it could go any lower than this. And I feel it's about time to end Harley Quinn's loneliness and let her be with her true love. And today I'm gonna do a quick unboxing and review and later you'll see a comparison with one of the most expensive one six figure. So this is Suicide Squad the Joker. Arkham Asylum exclusive version. The art box looks really nice. You can see the artistic drawing of the Joker on the front. And I love the color scheme. And it is quite unique. It doesn't feel cheap. And the good thing is that you can use the cover as a diorama background in your display. That's really nice. And here you can see a glimpse of what's inside the box and the figure itself and with all the accessories. So first, let's take a look at all the accessories that he comes with. Well, this Joker doesn't come with a lot of stuff. And this one, I honestly don't know what it is. And there is no info about it on the instruction paper. So if you did know what it is, please drop a comment down below. Then you got these hands. They're pretty well sculpted. You can see nice skin tone. The details are there and they're really good. The fins are also sculpted there. But these hands are not accurate to the movie. They're supposed to have tattoos painted on them. So I don't think I'm gonna put them on the Joker. And they also give you these cards. There's a Joker picture on one side. They're really cool. And then the chair. I think it's made of plastic, it feels lightweight, but it looks like a wheelchair just shrunk into one six scale, so it's really good. And that's it, that's all the accessories. Now looking at the figure, let's take a closer look at the portrait. Well there's no denying that the likeness is really strong. It really looks like Jared Leto's Joker in the film. And the paint application is awesome. There are so many details you can see. And the details on the lips. You can see the shiny metallic silver braces on his teeth. And these are amazing details. And there's that damaged tattoo on his forehead. And I love the details on the eyeshadows. And there's the sheen to his eyes, very well done. And even the hair sculpt looks awesome. 
and you can see all the straps and the buckles at the back of his straight jacket. Overall, the straight jacket, the body, they look very well proportioned. The pants, the material feels really soft and thin. And there's this plastic covering the knee joints. I think they're meant to prevent the pants from being stuck into the knee joints. And it is so rare that Hot Toys gave us this seamless bare feet. They look really nice and add up the level of realism. Again, on the straight jacket, there's the dirt weathering all over it, and that makes it look even more real. And as I mentioned earlier about the hands, they could be plugged into the wrist packs if you loosen the straight jacket. But the instructions said that the straps are pretty fragile, so be cautious when you decide to do it. And again with the portrait, I just love all the details. You can see the scars on the face, the hairlines looks perfect, looks really good. Oh shit. And now it's time for comparison. I know it's not really fair to compare the cheapest hot toys to a thousand dollar figures from Inart. But what I want to show you guys is that in my opinion, and from what I see in hand, this older release, the Suicide Squad Joker isn't that far behind in terms of likeness and the paint applications. Yes, this figure lacks accessories while Inart came with lots of them. And in its rooted hair, it's one of the best. But the sculpted hair on this Suicide Squad Joker is really good. The hairline is amazing and the hair color looks correct. On the other hand, it not got the rolling eyeball system and that's a win. But honestly, I'm really amazed at what Hot Toys did for a movie that wasn't doing well at the box office. Almost every figure from that movie came out pretty good. All the other versions of Joker, Deadshot, and my all-time favorite is this version of Harley Quinn. So that's about it. Overall, I'm very satisfied with this figure. But I want to know what you guys think. Is this cheapest Hot Toys figure a bad one? Or the price going down this low because the people hate this version of Joker? Do share your thoughts, leave a comment below. And next, I'm gonna do a review on the new Wonder Woman from GND. So make sure you hit the subscribe button with the notification bell on and smash the like button if you like this review and wanna support me. Peace out.